here's what our trainers are saying in terms of how agricultural community QPR is making a difference in their lives and the lives of their farming communities. Sadler. I am the Associate Financial Officer at Farm Credit Mid-America. Um, we serve uh, customers in our rural communities uh, to provide financing in order to um, help secure the futures of agriculture. Um, I'm also a mom um, and our family has a part-time beef cattle operation. I am Danny Prince. I'm currently a graduate student at the University of Kentucky. Uh, I am studying to get my master's initial certification so that I'll be able to teach Ag Ed in the future. Alethea Bruzak, I'm the Boyle County Agent for Family and Consumer Sciences. Yo, I am Gracie Furnish Reynolds and I um, in, have been involved in the agriculture industry ever since I was a kid. I grew up on my family's farm and we raised beef cattle and burley tobacco and a little bit of industrial hemp and we had sheep at 1.2 so just um, had a lot of Involvement growing up on our family's farm and then really got involved in 4-H and FFA. And it is Dr. Christy Geffey. I'm an assistant professor of agri-science at Murray State University. I also serve as the secretary for the Kentucky Women in Agriculture. I learned about QPR training and that I was going to be trained as a trainer. I will be honest, I was a little overwhelmed. Um, I thought to myself, how can I give a presentation on such a serious topic um, when I'm just not educated in health and mental awareness and things like that? I at first was a little nervous and kind of just didn't know. I didn't know what it would feel like to talk about this stuff and what it would feel like to lead trainings and would I be able to know enough to be able to say the right things or share just the right support with people. How can I really help someone who's in crisis? Like. I'm just me. I don't, I don't have the tools in my tool belt necessarily um, to do that. And so there was a lot of anxiety and essentially um, kind of self-doubt, like, can I really do this? How am I going to do this? Um, and so those were the thoughts and feelings that I had going into signing up. But yet I knew it was important and that we needed to step up. So my initiative and drive to step up is what kind of helped me to um, tamp down on those fears and insecurities. But we have a crisis and until we step up and um, start talking about the issue at hand, which is suicide, saying the word, mentioning it, bringing it up. We have a group of individuals who are very uh, stubborn, hard-headed, and independent. And to turn around and say, hey, I'm having a really bad day and I need to talk to somebody is hard and it's not something that we do. There's a stigma associated with suicide and even talking about getting help. There's a stigma. Why, why you should be self-reliant? Why aren't you? Um, and I think it's important that we break those barriers by changing the culture by bringing up the words, what we inevitably will do is save thousands of lives in the agricultural community because we're going to start slowly chipping away at that stigma to where getting help and saying that, hey, you know, I can't solve everything. I'm not a superhero. Even superheroes need help. Watch any of those. They need help. And when we finally break that barrier, break that cultural barrier, I think we'll start saving lives and helping helping those in our agriculture community and beyond. You know, it's important that our educators, the people that are seeing students, young people, especially with the rise in suicide in young and uh, younger uh, males, uh, young adult males, recently it's it's good to have boots on the ground and having people trained that are going to see these people every day and looking at it from another perspective you know there's not a lot of people in ag communities that are trained in suicide prevention uh and i think that it's important that we get more people into the ag communities that are trained in suicide prevention and things along those lines because that's one of the biggest risk groups uh, especially with you know men above the age of 55 60 are the highest at risk group and farming as a profession is one of the highest risk professions that you can have for uh for suicide i'd say that it's important because uh, suicide is preventable and oftentimes there are people close to someone who 
is thinking about suicide or having, you know, going through a depressed period and, and you know, getting close to that type of, of thinking, that could be the, you know, the, the person that stops that, you know. We're trying to open up the dialogue. And I think that's what QPR does. It allows us to open the dialogue and to essentially kind of peel the Band-Aid off. You know, there's a wound there and we need to address it. Uh, you can't just put Band-Aids on it. It's not going to heal. So we've got to address it. And that's what QPR does. It allows us to peel the Band-Aid off and to start addressing some problems and issues as a support system for an individual. And I took the training, learned and worked alongside some other great trainers um, to become better prepared to speak and to share this QPR training with others, which will in the end just do great things for our ag community. And um, putting those things aside really made it possible to step forward and put the fears aside um, and learn that I was perfectly capable um, of talking about our farmers and you know the things that they go through and the mental impact that each of the decisions they have to make every day has. And to be able to educate people so that we can recognize those signs and to help speak up when we need to. That, you know, talking about it won't encourage someone to do it. Yeah. That's, um, that was kind of awesome because, you know, you get kind of nervous talking about things that, you know, uncomfortable subjects like that. And, but to know that, well, talking about it isn't going to encourage someone, It'll, it might actually save their life. So that's, um, once I went through the training of, um, how to have those conversations, how to lead people in really tough conversations and just ultimately, how do we not just start the conversation because the conversation is happening, but how do we continue the conversation and help just people to feel comfortable, more comfortable than they typically are talking about, um, just suicide and suicide prevention. I am super excited, uh, especially for the kids, um, because I just want people to normalize those conversations from an early age. And I think it was really fun for me to be able to share about kind of um, the thought process and what our farmers experience in order to, you know, get to a place where they may have these thoughts or concerns. It made me think a lot more about signs that you can see about things that I could notice in students in the future in the classroom and things that small things that you can do to make yourself approachable and be that person that can be the trusted individual, uh, especially in a community that has so few of those that are trained uh, in suicide prevention. I think more people are being more open, um, open to talking about it, open to making changes, because I think more and more people are seeing like this is something that really needs attention and we don't have to be helpless in it or hopeless in it. Like there is so much hope and a lot of times it just starts with a conversation. I think on a personal level, just um, seeing loved ones struggle with um, their mental health and loved ones who are in agriculture. I think now um, all of those situations are better, but I think now if it ever comes back around on a personal level, I feel more equipped to be able to have the conversation to be able to help them. Um, it's so vitally important for us in our, in our farm communities. Because I've been in ag in the state of Kentucky for a long time, people kind of know me. I've worked in different venues, different work for FFA, worked uh, as a teacher at two different universities. I've gotten to know a lot of people. And so people have contacted me and reached out to me and said, hey, Christy, I hear you're doing this. We know we need you to come talk to us. For more information on Agricultural Community QPR for farmers and farm families, please visit our website or contact us using one of the email addresses provided.